uterine fibroids are benign or non-cancerous tumors of the uterine smooth muscle layer. They are also known as leomyomas. If we recall our anatomy knowledge, we know that the uterus consists of three layers. Endometrium, which is the inner epithelial layer, consisting of uterine glands. Myometrium, which is the middle layer, consisting of smooth muscle cells. And perimetrium, which is the outermost layer, also known as the serous layer. Fibroids develop in the myometrial layer of the uterus. Fibroids are highly prevalent, found in approximately 40% of women overall. They affect the women of reproductive age, and they are extremely uncommon before puberty. They are usually multiple and can substantially increase the size of the uterus. Fibroids are classified according to their location in relation to the myometrium. Intramural fibroids, as the name suggests, are located within the myometrium. Submucosal fibroids protrude into the endometrium and the uterine cavity. Subserousal fibroids protrude outwards into the perimetrium. These fibroids could be either pedunculated or non-pedunculated. Pedunculated fibroids are connected to the uterus by a stalk. Non-pedunculated fibroids do not have a stalk. The exact etiology or pathophysiology behind uterine fibroids is not known. However, their growth is primarily dependent on circulating estrogen levels, and more precisely, endogenous estrogen. Therefore, they can enlarge during pregnancy, in response to high estrogen levels, and shrink after menopause, due to the lack of estrogen. Research suggests that these fibroids start from a single smooth muscle cell, which is then followed by deviation from normal signaling pathways and ultimately develop into a fibroid. Moreover, leomyomas overexpress certain estrogen and progesterone receptors compared to the normal surrounding myometrium. Fibroids can undergo degenerative change due to the increased demand of the proliferating smooth muscle cells. Three forms of degeneration are recognized. Red degeneration, where necrosis and hemorrhage occur within the fibroid. These patients typically present in the mid-second trimester pregnancy with acute pain. Highline degeneration, characterized by asymptomatic softening and liquefaction of the fibroid. And cystic degeneration, which is characterized by asymptomatic central necrosis of the fibroid, leaving cystic spaces in the center. With time, they can become calcified. And rarely, cystic degeneration can lead to malignant transformation in certain individuals. These malignant tumors increase rapidly in size after menopause. Although etiology is uncertain, certain risk factors are found to be associated with uterine fibroids, including the following. Early menarche, nulliparity, obesity, late entry to menopause, and a positive family history of uterine fibroids. African descent is the most significant, non-modifiable risk factor for the development of fibroids. These patients usually present with more severe symptoms. In addition, increased parity, late menarche, smoking, and use of oral contraceptives, which reduce the action of endogenous estrogen, are associated with a reduced risk of fibroids. Now let's discuss about the clinical features of fibroids. They can cause several gynecological complaints and are one of the commonest indications for hysterectomy. However, the vast majority of them are asymptomatic. If present, the most common symptom is abnormal uterine bleeding. This could be either heavy menstrual bleeding or intermenstrual bleeding, which refers to vaginal bleeding at any time during the menstrual cycle other than during normal menstruation. Sometimes, there could be a combination of these two types. Other less common symptoms include dyspareunia or pain during sexual intercourse, pelvic pain, urinary frequency, bladder and bowel dysfunction, subfertility, and recurrent pregnancy loss. Pain is unusual, except in the special circumstances of acute red degeneration or torsion of a pedunculated fibroid. Subfertility occurs due to mechanical distortion or occlusion of the fallopian tubes and submucosal fibroids that distort the endometrial cavity, preventing implantation of a fertilized ovum. In this instance, surgical removal of the submucosal fibroids may enhance the fertility. Apart from these symptoms, common examination findings include signs of anemia on general examination, visible or palpable mass on abdominal examination, 
and, on by manual examination, an enlarged, firm, asymmetric uterus may indicate the presence of fibroids. Now let's discuss about the diagnosis of fibroids. Often the clinical features obtained from history and examination alone will be sufficient to establish the diagnosis. However, an imaging test is usually performed to confirm the diagnosis. Useful tests when uterine fibroids are suspected include the following. Transvaginal ultrasound scan is good for detecting and locating submucosal and small intramural fibroids. Transabdominal ultrasound scan is good for detecting larger intramural and subsericel fibroids. Saline infusion sonohysterography is good for detecting and locating submucosal fibroids. Hysteroscopy is good for detecting submucosal fibroids and planning subsequent hysteroscopic surgical treatment. And, MRI scanning is good for describing the morphology and location of fibroids. Finally, let's discuss about the treatment of fibroids. Asymptomatic fibroids usually do not require any treatment or they are managed with conservative therapy. Symptomatic fibroids can be treated with medical therapy, surgical therapy, or radiological therapy, depending on the type and severity of fibroids, fertility desire of the patient, and many other factors. Commonly used medical treatment for uterine fibroids is injectable GnRH agonists, which inhibit ovarian estradiol production and induce a menopausal state. However, GnRH treatment is not tolerated by all women because of the severe menopausal symptoms. Ulipristal acetate is a newer drug that is given orally and has the same action as GnRH agonists. Most importantly, it does not induce a menopausal state and associated symptoms. However, it is not widely used in clinical practice. It is important to note that medical therapy is not a viable long-term treatment option for uterine fibroids. And once the treatment is stopped, they regrow to their previous dimensions. Common surgical treatment options for fibroids include the following. Hysteroscopic myomectomy, which is a minimally invasive procedure to remove submucosal fibroids using a hysteroscope inserted through the vagina. It avoids surgical incisions and useful for relieving symptoms of heavy menstrual bleeding and to improve fertility. However, other types of fibroids cannot be removed by hysteroscopic myomectomy. Another surgical option is myomectomy, which is an invasive but fertility-sparing fibroid removal procedure. This can be done either with laparotomy or laparoscopic technique. However, laparoscopic technique is effective only for smaller, and fewer number of fibroids. Other type of surgical treatment option is hysterectomy or removal of the uterus. This is indicated for women with no future fertility desires. It may be achieved vaginally, laparoscopically, or via open surgery, depending on the size of the uterus. Both myomectomy and hysterectomy may be facilitated by treatment with GnRH agonists over three months prior to the surgery. This reduces the bulk and vascularity of the fibroids, resulting in rapid recovery and fewer post-operative complications. Radiological therapy for uterine fibroids include uterine artery embolization, a technique which is performed by a trained radiologist. In this procedure, a small incision is made in the groin under local anesthesia, and a cannula is placed into the femoral artery and guided into the uterine arteries. Embolization particles are then injected, reducing the blood supply to the uterus, which induces infarction and degeneration of the fibroids. Okay. That is all I wanted to discuss with you in this video. Hope it made sense and you've learned something from it. If you have any question or doubt regarding this topic, feel free to post them in the comment section. Thanks for watching. See you soon in the next video.